Yeah, it's been exciting and, uh, you know, a lot of hard work's uh, paid off and it's, it's good that the team's managed to have a successful series. What's been the fundamentals of, of your success? Do you think at the start of the summer, whilst the rest of the team uh, were in the Caribbean, the fact that you had quite a bit of county championship cricket for Warwick to stud you in good stead? Yeah, I think so. I think the... Uh, not being able to use a heavy rolling kind of cricket helped me uh, in the, these, these first couple of test match wickets probably. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's been uh, a bit of a sort of battle, I think, w with, with the wickets and, and, and not being really better friendly like everyone thinks, uh, you know, they probably are. But um, uh, it, it, it's been a good challenge and it's been a good test of, for, for myself of my technique and my temperament and, and where I am at, with my game. Um, where you were at the end of the winter... Uh, and where you are now, do you feel you're much more firmly entrenched in the team? I'm not sure about being entrenched in the team. I, I think it's maybe a bit dangerous to, to get a bit complacent with the position and feeling you're entrenched in the team and feeling you and guaranteed a spot. I don't think it's healthy. I think it's important that I, as I've said in the past, look to keep improving my game and, and, and work on the areas that probably need uh, a bit of attention here and there. You know, with Graham Gooch and Andy Fly, you know, we've got the best batting coaches around. You said uh, keep working on your game and improving areas that need improving. What are they? Look pretty good to us. Yeah, you know, now and again, there's a few things that I think I could probably improve on to, to make me uh, a better player and, and, and uh, hopefully contribute a bit more. Let's talk about the partnership you had with Stuart Broad. Given what's happened since, do you think that uh, world record partnership has been tarnished in any way? Um, you know, it's, it's hard to say at the moment. It's, it's still a bit sort of fresh in the mem memory and, uh, and I've, I've only got really sort of good memories of watching Stuart hit it through the covers and you know obviously going out there the lot furthest thing from my mind was putting on a world record stand so to be able to have that that's an amazing feeling and uh, really happy with the 3-1 the win as well and to be able to um, to do that to, to help the team win is very special indeed. What about uh, the broader picture for you now uh, are you going to try and push hard to get into 50 over cricket, 20 over cricket, or do you see yourself as a, as a niche test player? Oh, well, I think I did all right the last two t one day as I played for, for England uh, against Bangladesh. You know, unfortunately, I couldn't win the one game, but I'd, I'd like to think I helped uh, contribute to the second one. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an exciting time for English cricket, and uh, I don't think we should forget about that. Well played to you. Thanks very much. Well played indeed. Very, very good series and uh, a fabulous knock here. And I don't think anyone should uh, take away the credit that he deserves the knock here in this test match, despite what we read in the papers this morning. Uh, just to confirm, of course, the leading run scorers uh, in this series have Jonathan Trott at the head of the list, a long way ahead of uh, Stuart Broad, who slipped up there in that uh, first innings here at Lords. Uh, a very fine, I think it's a very fine performance by Jonathan Trott, although we went through this with uh, Ian uh, and with Bumble, didn't we? So the figures overall might be a bit disappointing. We've now got Mikey and Nasser. Uh, still about much the same sort of thing. ...about these allegations. We got to the hotel at about 7.30 last night and <clears throat> I was just settling into my room when I got a message that Scotland Yard officers are here and they'd like to see me. So I called them to my room. This was, I think, between 7.30 and 8 that they said that on, on a tip-off we want to investigate some of your players. And I said, please go ahead because we'll do all, we'll assist you whatever we can. So they were there for about two hours. They spoke to three gentlemen, went into their rooms, came back, and at about 10 o'clock, they said, we are through, we are going away. I said, anything that you want me to do now? He said, no, you proceed with your normal program, uh, which we did, Mike. And what happened then, though? At some point, the team must have got together and talked about these allegations. Yes, I've had a team meeting. Uh, we have not really discussed in detail because... They were just given, so far, I've got nothing on a piece of paper. It's all verbal, but I've read newspapers and televisions. Uh, yes, I've discussed, what I discussed with the team was team action as from now, uh, and they're uh, going about and meeting people and things like that. Is there any danger that Pakistan wouldn't turn up today to complete this test match? Not while I'm manager. They will not run away from any match. Now, we heard that uh, some of the Pakistan players have had phones confiscated and computers confiscated. Can you confirm that? Telephones, yes. All the, only these three gentlemen, the uh, police which were there, they have taken their uh, mobile phones away. And h how far have you had conversations with Pakistan Cricket Board officials back in Pakistan about this? Well, the officials are here. Chairman of Pakistan Cricket Board is in town. 
and I have uh, reported to him the incident last night, as I'm telling you, and I shall be seeing him again this afternoon. Is there any indications yet that there's going to be a threat to the one-day series which is coming up? There's not many days between now and the start of the 2020 Games. Yeah, Michael, as far as I'm concerned, as, as I speak to you, there is no danger. We are moving to the West Country day after, start our practice match, T20s and then ODIs. So far, as a team manager, I've been told to go ahead with normal procedure. Um, could you confirm who the, the three are in question who had their mobile phones confiscated? Yes, yes. Um, the skipper and uh, Asif, and the third one was uh, Mohammed Amir. Mohammed Amir, that's it. Um, it's not the first time that the Pakistan cricket team have been involved with match fixing allegations. Um, some people might say that Pakistan cricket is insti institutionally corrupt. What would you say to that? No, I would not like to say that. This is the first time I'm as a manager and we've been involved in such a thing. Yes, one is heard, one is read. But I wouldn't like to go that far, Mike. And rumours about the Pakistan tour of Australia recently um, were that players uh, left the team, not just because of problems within the dressing room, but because of uh, betting allegations there as well. Could you confirm or deny that? Michael, I don't think people left on their own. Any, any team in Australia, when we were touring Australia, I wasn't with the team, but there was a changeover like there is tomorrow. Uh, ODI, six boys are coming and six are going. So this is all uh, because the selectors, nothing, nothing on their own. If people um, were found guilty, if anybody was found guilty on the back of these allegations, uh, what do you think the appropriate punishment would be? Well, I, ca I can't really say about the punishment, but if anybody is guilty, he's guilty and he should be punished. But what kind of punishment would that be? Well, it depends on the guilt. I mean, if I've stolen one shilling from you, you'll punish me for a shilling, not for a million pounds. Okay, it's a, a young team that you've got. It's a very difficult situation now moving forward over the next few days. Uh, how do you think that Salman Butt, the young captain on your team, are going to come to terms with this? Yes, it is a young team, as you know yourself. Uh, we are trying to build for the future. Salman is a young captain. Well, he's not the captain for ODIs. Afridi has already arrived. So I'm sure he's got a little bit of time before we play South Africa in UAE. You're the manager of the team. Is discipline ultimately in your hands? Yes, that's right. And so you see you're having quite a, a large role to play over the next week then, albeit a difficult one. Certainly, one has to face it and uh, one has to accept responsibilities. Okay, well, we, we wish you well and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. Uh, one thing I can add to that is that the uh, sports minister in Pakistan has uh, been quoted that uh, if these are found guilty, there will be life bans. As far as he's concerned, the only punishment is a life ban uh, for the... Alleged Mr. Mitty in there, if I was innocent and done anything wrong, mm -hmm. there's a test match well, going on, I would go up and say I want to go out and practice. All, all I would say is that if a, if a team decision is reached by the manager and captain or whoever, coach, rubbish. you abide by it. And, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm not arguing, <laughs> not saying it's not rubbish, I'm saying also under pressure, you know, not everyone makes the right decision under pressure. You can pick up any newspaper in the world any day of the year and there'll be a story about someone making but the wrong there's decision. there's no point us sitting here and saying innocent until proven guilty if they don't have that approach. They've well, got to believe well, yeah, well, as a management yeah, yeah, that yeah, they yeah. are innocent yeah. and they come out and they warm up and they do their mm. job properly. Mm. And you have a presentation out in the open. You do things properly. Either they, you go down that road, you do it properly until someone says, no, sorry, you're nicked. Well, first of all, the Pakistan team, Correct, yeah. where it was held and how it was held, I am of West Indies. If that had been any accusation against the West Indies team of today, mm -hmm. 2010, when I retired 20 odd years ago, I would feel very embarrassed. Mm -hmm. If I was in any team that any member of the team was accused like any of those guys and there was question mark around them, I in that team would feel very embarrassed. I wouldn't even want to, to finish the, the test match. Mm -hmm. So when Nasser is saying, oh, don't stay in the dressing room, you yeah. have got to think about individuals, Nasser. They if you, must if you were innocent, Mike, if you yeah. were innocent. I play in a team. I don't play on my own. But you wouldn't my come out and practice? No. If I would be so innocent embarrassed. Man. Nas, remember that test match that West Indies lost in two days at Leeds? I did not go out for dinner that night. I was so embarrassed. And that is just losing a test match. And I wasn't a member of the team. completely different. No, you lost Nasser. a test match. I've no, lost Nasser. many a test match where I've been embarrassed and I stay in my room. But uh, what I don't do is hide in a, in a dressing room before a day's play.
I'm, I, I am innocent. Been, I'm going out to work in my been game. Team that anyone has been accused of what they have been accused of. I, I've been that accused is a different of, situation. I've been, been accused of things in Brisbane and tosses and being part of a rubbish team. And you hold your hands up and you go out there Nasser, and you front up. Nasser, being accused of being a, on a rubbish team happens every day. Okay. We have lots of rubbish teams. What, this what is we a have, hang on, I think we can, you can bat this back and forth uh, like a game of ping pong for the next three hours. We've just got a, a difference of opinion. And a different way of treating uh, the same problem. And you know, so I always find fascinating about these discussions because there are different ways of looking at these things. Um, Pakistan on their way. They've been uh, soundly beaten here on the field. They have all sorts of things to try and sort out off the field. Um, you can put your money on another team meeting very, very soon. Um, and as my two guests here are saying, there are. Uh, there are embarrassments to sort out, that's the minimal problem. There are serious problems to sort out. Um, they'll be heading back to that same hotel they left late this morning um, to debate all that. And of course, some of those players will be on their way anyway, because not all those players are in the one-day squad. Uh, not all those players will be trying to direct their attention to the cricket that's coming up uh, starting next weekend. If I may make one more controversial point. Nasser mentioned that it shouldn't be up to the Pakistan board because the Pakistan board banned them for life and they come back in a, in a month. It should be up to the ICC. I don't think the ICC will be doing a great, a great job in that, in that area. There have been people that have been accused in the past. The ICC have not done too much about it. I'll end there. Which you know for a fact? Well, I wouldn't say it on television without knowing. So there are, there are, we've talked about this today. There are, there are always rumours. And with rumours comes and that come names, but without facts, as you say, you can't speak to that camera, for instance, and say, right, I know of so-and-so or so-and-so uh, against whom charges have not been laid, but against whom there are allegations. There are some names that were mentioned years ago, David. Mm -hmm. The ICC knew about it, and it took about three years for the public to know. I think everybody knows about that story. So that is proof. That is fact. So which names are you thinking of now? I ain't, ain't going to be calling any names now, but that is fact. And there are other instances that things have happened. Which you know from your days being involved on ICC committees. So you've been amongst the ICC, you've spoken to people involved at ICC, and you have no faith in None ICC whatsoever. to do anything about None. this. None. So do you have any faith in the Pakistan board, who, as NASA said, you know, uh, only a few months ago there were life bans being issued? Uh, Muhammad Yusuf for one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was said mm -hmm. that this was a question of Eunice team Khan. spirit. Yeah.